now for Donna. He needs a big double here. This is a real big strike. This could be the match. Two, four, five. Boy, that looked like an awfully good shot, didn't it? And again, right here, this spare doesn't seem important, but the pin count is all important because if she were to convert this spare, she forces Leila to keep full count or 20 pins, spare strike in the 10th, to win the match. Otherwise, we have a tie. Well, that ball looked like it was going to finish and just kind of faded. It just skated right by, gave it a little too much room. Cross lane. Well, she handled the cross lane spares pretty well, just didn't throw enough strikes. Well, we were worried about the spares. We thought the strikes would come. <laughs> it's always the opposite of what we think. You know that, right? We have a definite possibility of overtime here. The Leala can throw the first strike and end it right now. Good shot. Leaving the 10. Very good shot, and she liked it when she let it go. You could see it in her eyes. Yeah, she really, she tried to tighten up and go right at it. She took a real direct shot. She didn't waste any time, but you could see the six just dying off to the side. It went right into the channel and just didn't want to take out the 10. Right here, half pocket, six pin just goes right in the channel, has no chance to get the 10. Cross lane, and... Breathes a sigh of relief, so now a strike, and she's a winner. Nine count, and they go into overtime. She has another chance. She's had two chances to throw the strike to win the game. I think she'll be able to jump on this. I liked her shot, that first shot in the tenth, a good, crisp, professional shot, a little straighter, just hit the pocket and get strike her nine. See she, if she can do the same thing here. She kept the ball in play. That was, it was a very professional strike in that situation. It's virtually the same type of situation. If she spares, she locks out Dana Miller Mackey. Here comes the head pin. Is it going to get it? Oh, oh my, a <laughs> little bit short. All right, so she leaves the 10 pin. Well, 10 pin a little bit easier to pick up uh, than the 4-6, but for that $18,000 prize check and a first place trophy, who's to say? Corey Nichols, looking for the title. Got it. Situation is this, she must strike. She would shoot 235 if she strikes. Dana Miller Mackey could throw three strikes in a row for 234. We could have a possible tie if Lori Nichols were to just get nine. A lot of uh, oohs and ahs from the crowd here. It's been some excellent bowling. Way to win a title, have to throw a strike. Corey Nichols, her first win. <sighs> wow. Well, Lori needs a strike. Big frame here, much better ball speed. That ball just straightened out, did not hook. It's going to come right down to the 10th frame. Whoever is able to throw a double will more than likely walk away with the title. Laurie could still shoot 198 with a spare and three, which would force Don Adamek to double in the 10th to win. Laurie adding a piece of tape in her ball and not getting a good feel. Apparently uh, had the ball speed, but dropped it, did not get the, the lift on it, and a little clap for herself for picking up the single pin spare. She could shoot 198. She needs to get all three right here to force Donna to get two strikes in the 10th. That's what you want for a title. See people perform and execute under the most severe pressure. Can't even bear to watch. 
Boy, what an accelerating shot that was. Beautiful, classy shot for Laura Nichols in the 10. The best shot of the game for Lori. She accelerated. She got the lift and the turn on. You can just see the difference. Uh, I could have been the fact that she just was not getting a good feel, and uh, she was dropping the ball, afraid to put a piece of tape in. Got to be two or three miles per hour difference between that shot and what she did in the first three or four frames. That and also the revolutions on the ball. You could just see the ball turning so much more. Here she did it again, but that one she pulled. Tried to go with a frozen rope shot through the nose, and uh, the game in the 180s, 188 if she spares here. Right now, Donna's going to need a spare good and good, some good pin count on the first ball and also her field ball. 188 for Lori Nichols, who will look back on the missed four pin in the fifth. And probably realize that's the one that might have cost her. Interesting, Lori averaged 188 on this pair. So it was not one of her favorite pairs throughout the week. to see at this level. Can't throw a better shot than that for the time. <laughs> Perfect. Just pretty, pretty shot. She went for it all. She's able to do it in the clutch. I said there wasn't uh, too many players that were better in the clutch than this lady right here. She's jumping. She's knowing. She's, yes, she can carry it. And a big smile. Boy, you work and you work and you practice and you're doing all that practicing. You're saying to yourself, well, okay, this one's for the title. This one's for the title. And then you get an opportunity to go up and execute. Yeah. And you throw shots like that. That's why you win 18 times at this level. Well, I mentioned before, it was almost the writing on the wall. Denny, she bowls the 290 just to make it in the telecast. She works her way up through the field. She bowled superbly, really, all night long. Just a few errant shots here in the final game. So funny, too, because when I talked with her prior to the telecast, she said, you know, throughout the week, I, I feel like I've been bowling pretty well, but I haven't really had anything this week, and I got lucky a couple of games got into the show, and we'll see what happens. Donna Adamek, the winner of the $40,000 Robbie's Open from Four Seasons Bowl in Alexandria, Louisiana. Back to have a career probably in a couple years, family. So right now, she's at eight career titles. This could get her really close. <laughs> And that was huge, Carolyn. Looks like she was a little slow on that shot, but got it to the left. Sends it left. Ball comes roaring back, but trips out the six. And here's where you're going to see a little bit of versatility. Cara likes to play up the lane. She says that. She says she likes that part of the lane. Entry of angle is everything. She's comfortable there. But when she has to move in, she has to take it into consideration what she has to do with her ball speed and her hand. Stay behind the ball, let it roll so it hooks back. Come on, Kelly! Okay, she needs those. Set that up. She can strike it out for 214. She can actually force Tenille Milligan to get two strikes, or we could potentially have a tie. This is why Cara has eight titles in a short period of time. And a lot of people, you know, have said things, you know, have questioned that. This is why. She, she's she got ice in her veins. That doesn't mean she's not a nice person, but when she's on the lanes, she is there for business and she makes good quality shots. Oh, and not tripping the six pin. That was a big one. Really needed that strike. Put huge pressure on Tennille. Now, Cara's been in this position last week, numerous times in the last few years. It's going to be very interesting to see the shot that Tennille makes in the 10th frame. Spares it up for 203. So Tennille Milligan will need a mark and nine pins. She left the ring 10 on this lane, on this lane last shot. Struck the time before and went high for up to 3.610, I believe, the shot before that on this lane. So she's kind of been all over the board. Well, and when you haven't been in that position, 
in a long time. Of course, your nerves set in anyway, no matter how many times you've been there. to leave just a two pin she let it go and she said oh no didn't quite catch it got it a little bit to the right hit that hang spot just left the two she actually drew a break last night on her first shot in the 10th to get through to this to the television show she kind of went a nosedive and left just a 10 pin was fortunate to defeat carol giannotti block now she covers that spare that'll give her 185 in the ninth with a spare in the tenth she'll need nine pins on this fill ball to win eight would be a tie just anxiously waiting on the hot seat to see what happens. Come on, make it this is for it all. Neil Milligan wins her first title in three years, 205 to 203. Stay with us, we'll be back. Win. It's still anybody's game. And remember, this was a low scoring event. So it's not shocking that two non titleists aren't shooting 250 to win their first title. Exactly. Okay. Key shot. Much oh, better. It was a beauty. Ten in the pit off her hand, without a doubt. Beautiful form, stayed on her shot, long release, perfect. Couldn't have thrown it any better. Unfortunately, she'll have to finish by her choice on 26, and she's had a six, a five, a six, and only one strike on that lane. And I'm sure she's thinking of that. I'm sure she is. Not a very, maybe not a good choice to finish. Oh, great shot by Tiffany. So it's a four pin match through nine. Stayed on that shot, kept the ball on line 100% better. Great strike and an important strike. So Tiffany Stanbro cannot shut out Kelly Kulik. Kelly Kulik will have to pretty much match what Tiffany does. There's the title list so far this year. It's a long list. One of these ladies will be added to it. Oh, Jan, what a pressure shot. First one in the 10th, coming off a strike in the ninth, huge. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to be Kelly finishing last right now. Great shot by Tiffany. Look at that rotation. When her ball hits the pocket, I don't know how she ever leaves anything. Strong rotation. She's a strong young lady. Don't forget, it is going to be Kelly's tournament to win. She led all week. She led by a lot. She will have a chance in the 10th, regardless of what Tiffany does here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Did she come back from a few frames of a uh, couple bad shots there? I think they could hear her all the way in Oklahoma City. Beautiful shot off her hand. Just nothing else to say about that except pure. Yeah, well, she just finished on a lane where she has just gone nine, six, seven, and seven. She had not struck on lane 25 this game until the 10th frame. Unbelievable performance by, oh boy, unbelievable performance by Tiffany. Excellent. What a finish. 194 for Tiffany Stanborough. Her job is done, and Kelly Kulik chose this, the pressure square on her shoulders. One strike on this lane so far. She'll need would, two strikes and six pins. I would choose to finish first if I lay. That's my opinion. But Kelly probably thought she had a better shot on the lane she's finishing on. Okay, let's see what happens. Needs a hook, needs a hook, and there's one. Boy, there were some nerves going on. Oh, my God. But what maturity in these two 
two ladies to get up on lanes that neither one have had a good reaction on and to throw strikes. My hat's off to them, win or lose. Beautiful pin action. That soft speed, got it to the right spot, didn't get it as far right as she did the last two shots. Beautiful reaction. Couldn't have asked for anything better. Tiffany Stanro is looking straight down. She doesn't want to see it. She's no, she knows she did the best she could. Kelly Kulik has about the most pressure I'm sure she's ever felt right now. But Tiffany has nothing to be ashamed of. She did exactly what she should have, forced her opponent to beat her. Beautiful shot. Kelly. Oh! And the 10 pin stands. So Tiffany Stanbro wins her first career title. Kelly Kulik gave it a heck of a try. Great shot in the 10th. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Rail losing to Leanne Barrett last year, 227 to 182. Just may end up finishing twice two years in a row. Pretty good order there. Soldiers all in a row. She'd like to watch him disappear. Well, she hasn't seen that since the second frame, but uh, she's definitely been on for her spares. Threw it right through the nose. The last time on 36. Well, that one's right. And a wonderful shot. Seven pin remains. You don't know how good that shot was. The Wally's really carried pretty good. Uh, the rest of the week, I, I'm surprised that they're not carrying here tonight with the averages as high as they were and uh, what it took to make uh, the top 24 here this week. You had to be able to carry these wall shots, and they're just not carrying here tonight. So obviously the lane's a lot tighter, not the back-end reaction that we saw. First order of business now. Make the spare, and if she throws a strike on the first shot in the 10th frame and then counts 20, she will... Close Kim Terrell out, 192 to 191. Spare is done, but there's still some work left in the 10th frame. You can see the power and the speed that uh, Nikki puts on it to shoot her spare. She comes flat behind the ball. Shot that seven pin from about the mil middle of the lane to the left-hand side of it even. A little extra work. Get that conditioner off the track. Ball is not exactly gripping and hooking, is it? <gasps> when you send it to the right. Clean release. And a very bad break indeed. Back-to-back 10-pins on the left-hand lane. And there you see the slumped shoulders. Nikki G really <laughs> threw a very fine shot there. Pretty shot. She really ripped through it, too. Uh, it almost appears these, this is the first game that these pins may have uh, had bold on them, other than uh, we know a little bit better. But uh, <laughs> great shot. That you know They're just playing in such a deep angle, and they're just not getting that back-end reaction. Still the key ingredient. Get into the clubhouse with the highest possible score, which would be 191 if she strikes. Doesn't take a mathematician to realize that Kim would have to strike out to tie her then. Almost missing this spare. A big sigh of relief and a big smile for Nikki as uh, she says, oh, thank you. That'll get your attention. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kim's going, hook, 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 hook. <laughs> no. 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 Just kidding. <laughs> These two players have just absolutely refused to wilt. They haven't exactly struck, but uh, they have hung tough. Well, Kim Terrell can go back to the second and third frame and see that she's chopped the 2-5 and the 6-10. And as always in the sport of bowling, you always carry when it doesn't make that much difference. But well, in this case, it did. That was a key strike because she cannot lose. That's right. That was a big strike right there. 
but what's going through Kim Terrell's mind right now. I haven't hit lane 36. I just really want to make some good shots. Maybe it'll be my turn. It's going to have to be a Brooklyn. And that's one. Owens and Joyce are going, Kim, excuse us, but we can't take this much longer. Really, really turning that ball uh, very early. I'm surprised it uh, actually caught the head pin on the left. I think Kim is too. Uh, you know, that might just be what she needs to loosen up as well. This ball going away, Brooklyn. The five pin uh, says, okay, I'll uh, knock that nine out. Two more to tie. Brooklyn again. Not to be. And so for the second year in a row, Kim Terrell finishes just a little short. Apologizes, I'm sure, to Nikki G for throwing the Brooklyn, but there's your first multiple winner of 1991. This angle is also very difficult uh, for the right-handers because you're coming in uh, you know, basically from left to right, and you're not coming straight up at them. And the carry is uh, its known to be much better from an outside line. Strike right here would go a long way in advancing Sue Neidig on up the ladder here in Garland, Texas. Nicely done. That's what you want to do to an opponent when you get an opportunity. Put them away as soon as possible. Sue's career TV match record is one and two. So she does have one match to her credit and on her way to her second match doesn't waste a whole lot of movement very methodical player economizes most of the motion simple game and another good shot he seems to have a pretty good feel for this pair of lanes of course if she wins and takes on Dee Dee Davidson, she'll face another left-hander as opposed to a righty. That's right. Now, her last six shots have been in the pocket, so uh, she is lined up, really, on lanes 35 and 36. It'll be a matter of Dee Dee comes in and uh, starts playing on the lanes a little bit. Uh, Sue might see her shot change. Mm -hmm. Spare here and just a pin. We'll advance her into the next game. No problem with the spare. And let's hope that she didn't watch Del Ballard this past weekend. And you're here in uh, the hometown of Del Ballard mm. uh, near Richardson, Texas, is uh, where Del's from. And uh, people here felt very, very bad for Del. There isn't a player in the country, whether an AM or professional, that uh, can't sympathize with what happened to him. And even though Petey Weber won the tournament, I'll guarantee you Petey probably feels just as bad. But uh, those things happen, and as great a player as Del Ballard is, he'll bounce back. Solid game for Sue Knighted, who finishes at 214. And she will now advance and take on D.B. Davidson. So for Jackie Sue. Which would force Kelly to just continue marking. Well, and remember, Kelly had to bowl two good games, the seventh and position round game, just to get back into the show. So she has earned her title if she's victorious. No, now it's a common thing what Carolyn did. It's as though she compensated on the left lane for what she did on the right lane. So light on that shot. You see Carolyn actually though, she said she did better as the lanes got tougher. She was really up there in the top eight all week. Kelly Kulik, 16th that first round, but then up there all the way through. Leanne Barrett, the only one who started very, very slow and then progressed. You have to hit the 2-8 hard enough to deflect one of the pins to get the 7 pin. Perfectly done. The best Caroline can shoot now would be 2-10. So Kelly Kulik just needs a good pin count in both frames. Look out, 
You and the pins, baby. You and the pins. Keep that shoulder up. Get a ball, please, Carrie! Yeah! Yes! She's telling the ball what to do, and then she's begging for it to do it. There's no response. Let's just watch this. Beautiful. What a shot. And that has pretty much closed the door here on Carolyn Dorn Ballard. Just needs some pin count. Get that shoulder up. Oh, that was a championship performance, Shan, if I've ever seen one. Yes, it was. <laughs> so Kelly Kulik wins her first professional title, and what a place to do it. She's the winner of the Women's U.S. Open Bowling Championship. It's all Kelly Kulik today. Ooh, baby. She's your champ. Stay with us. We'll be right back.